So, um, is anyone in here 21? Anyone here 21? Anyone here 22? Okay. So I'm actually asking you this because um, we don't have the conservatives here, but the Liberal Party, the Conservative Party, and the NDP have, uh, over the last 21 years, each of them has had a chance to be in power of Ontario, in, in neutral in, gover in the government of Ontario. So some of the questions that we're going to be asking, really, these are ongoing issues. They're, they're things that have been ongoing. So um, definitely also what I want the candidates to keep in mind is that um, a lot of these problems, even more problems under the, the time their party was in power. Um, so in terms of responding to these questions, um, I'm really interested to hear what your party has done and will do as opposed to what some other party didn't do or did. Um, I, I really want you to be answering specifically talking about your party and what it's done or what it's going to do as opposed to um, going on about what another party has done because the reality is over the last 21 years, every party has had a chance to do something related to these issues and whether they have or not is for us to figure out. These questions um, really came from both the mandate of Voice for Muslim Youth, a lot of the issues that came up in the town hall, but also in consultation with um, there's a whole bunch more people coming. Okay. Also in more consultation with um, youth workers and, and Muslim community members. So I'll be reading the questions, both giving a context and then asking the question. Um, some of these things or issues you might be very familiar with, and some of these might be things that are actually new to you as community members. And then actually we'll have two guests to come up and, and read two questions as well. So the first question we have is um, around child and youth mental health. So of course, the mandate of the provincial government is related to health. So child and youth mental health falls into this. So the context is that in Ontario, there's a growing recognition that child and youth mental health and mental health in general need to be seen as funding as a funding priority for the, the Ontario Ministry of Health. Ottawa's Muslim communities are also grappling with these issues as we are beginning to overcome the stigma attached with mental illness in our communities in order to openly discuss the reality that our youth are struggling and we have seen the impact of mental health issues, particularly in the form of youth suicides within our own community. One in four immigrants to Ottawa are refugees. Particularly vulnerable segments of Ottawa's Muslim youth population are refugees from countries such as Somalia, Iraq, and Afghanistan, who have experienced the trauma of witnessing war firsthand. There are virtually no mental health services and supports offered to these youth when they arrive in Canada. The Ottawa Community Immigrant Services Organization ran a pilot project in order to provide targeted mental health supports for refugee youth, but finding sustainable funding for this initiative has been very difficult. As untreated mental health issues can lead youth to drop out of school and get involved with drugs and other criminal activities, the social costs of lack of treatment far outweigh the costs of provincially funded treatment and prevention efforts. So the question to the candidates is, how does your party propose to improve funding and services for the prevention and treatment of child and youth mental illness in Ontario? And then the second question to that is, do these proposals include targeted programs or funding opportunities to support refugee youth? So the first person to um, respond to this will be Wally Farah. Uh, thank you, Sean. Um, when I first came to Ottawa, I remember uh, it was 1994, uh, and uh, one, one of the first things that I did group of uh, my colleagues uh, and friends was we created something called, when, when we saw the need, we created something called, um, this one. Try to talk directly into it. Uh, one of the, some of the lights actually burn out is one of the things I asked, but if you need it, uh, you can hear me now, right? Okay, good. Um, so one of the, we, what we found is that there was a lot of uh, refugee influx in, in Ottawa at that time. Uh, a big area, it was the Vietnamese, but that time it was the Somali refugees, and there were many, many children who needed a lot of support. So we created, uh, um, myself and a group of uh, co college mates a uh, long time ago, we created something called uh, Learning Together Homework Club. So and it still exists in Ottawa South. And it was uh, to help those children who have seen the war and, and, and wanted to become academically strong. So we, 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 we give them support in academy. And over the years, I work I, uh, up until uh, September 6th. Yeah, yes, yes. You only have two minutes for um, Yes, uh, because I have been working with this very issue at OSISO, because I, I worked at OSISO up until uh, September 6th. I'm now off. And every year we have been trying to get funding 
for uh, help, uh, like mental. We even wanted to make mental health issues as part of settlement services for refugees and for immigrants. And we have been unable to do that. Uh, but I am proud to say that the NDP, an NDP government, if elected, will actually uh, implement the recommendations by the Selected Committee on Mental Health and Addictions final report. This is a report that actually addresses this issue and we will create one single body that will uh, you know, coordinate and manage you know, um, issues related with mental health and, and, and so we have a plan and it is a, a, a committee that has produced that report it's, uh, I can share with you later on and I can show you but uh, so we have a plan for that and, and, and hopefully OSIS and other organizations then we'll be able to access funding to address those issues. Thank you. Thank you. You can just pass the mic to Yasser Nakhbi, who is running next. Thank you very much. This is a very important question because we know the stigma that is associated with mental health issues, uh, not only in adults, but especially in children. And one of the key issues that we need to work on is to ensure that we uh, have systems in place that will identify early on issues around mental health, depression, all those type of things uh, among uh, our students. Uh, so we need systems in place in our schools, uh, in, our, in our youth programming, where you can, you can early identify uh, symptoms of mental health issues and be able to help. I'm very proud to say that the report that uh, Wally was mentioning, the Select Committee Report on Mental Health and Addiction, which is a very important work that the legislature do, that the provincial government is already implementing all the recommendations of that report. Uh, the Ontario Liberal government uh, in, uh, recently announced $257 million over three years to implement the recommendations of that report. And our very first focus is to work on children and youth. And the programming is being rolled around across the province, working with uh, school boards, working with youth organizations, with settlement agencies, to make sure that this, these dollars are translated into support workers, uh, in case workers, in, in uh, um, uh, 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 doctors uh, that can then provide those services to make sure that we identify mental health issues and then be able to help our youth and children uh, to, to deal with that. Because early identification is key. Because once you can identify earlier, we can, we can address the situation. So $257 million have been parts in the budget. The programming is being rolled out through the Ministry of Health, working along with the Ministry of Education and Children and Youth Services to ensure that those services exist in our community and that we are providing those services uh, to our children and youth. So is there anything specifically targeting the re report for refugees? Um, through the settlement agencies that we will be uh, obviously targeting refugees as well. Uh, the, the money of course is for, um, for children and youth, so our focus is to, to uh, work, uh, ensure that we are providing services uh, to the children of refugees and youth. A lot of them come from war torn countries as we know, so they have seen a lot of trauma uh, when they come to our school system. And the best place to make sure that we're providing them key services and help them overcome that trauma and integrate well in, into our society is at the school level. And that's where we're making sure that we have social workers, we have experts in mental health, uh, uh, focusing on those children and, and providing services to them. Okay, thank you. So next um, respondent will be Alex Hill from the Green Party. Uh, so I think one thing that hasn't necessarily been acknowledged yet that needs to is that the stigma uh, attached to mental health and mental illnesses is not unique to the Muslim community. It's not unique to racialized or marginalized communities. It, it's a, a phenomenon across the province and across the country that I think we have to come to terms with uh, collectively and individually and within our own communities. Uh, the approach of the Green Party and, and the Green Party of Ontario to health, to education, is one of decentralization. Um, we, in addition to what the Liberals are proposing, have proposed an additional $1.6 billion dollars um, to address uh, community health needs, uh, and we would entrust communities at the local level to come to terms with how they want that money to be spent. The reality of um, a recently immigrated family to Canada living in Bayshore is very different than the reality that an Aboriginal family in Thunder Bay or Sault Ste. Marie is facing. 
And I think that our healthcare system needs to acknowledge that. Our goal is to provide Ontarians, 50% uh, of Ontarians with access to a community health clinic by 2016. Um, that would increase to 90% by 2020. Um, we believe that through such a system, we would be able to address the unique needs of communities and, of course, empower people at the individual level to cater to the needs of their community.